Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, really my great honor to be here to speak uh, uh, at the conference. Uh, so the one, the topic I'm going to present today is called the uh, static of analysis of framework. So before I'm going to start, can someone tell me how much, uh, do you know anything about static analysis? If you, if you can hand up. So many, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, also, I would like to mention that uh, actually there are two speakers for this project, but uh, he just uh, uh, couldn't make this trip because for family issue. So I will finish this talk alone. So first of all, uh, something about our, about our team. I'm from, I'm a final year PhD student at uh, Monash University. I'm a member of a smart lab uh, in the Department of Software Systems and Cyber Security. So in our lab, basically, it's called a smart, anal smart software analysis and trustworthy computing. So we work on the research on software engineering and program analysis. Uh, in particular, my own research interest is static program analysis for Python code. So we are from National University and located in Melbourne, Australia. We are the group of eight universities in Australia. Normally, it's uh, considered the first, uh, one of the best universities in Australia. Now let's talk about the, uh, something about software engineering research because I know quite a few of you are actually from industry. Software engineering research is a kind of a, it's a very broad concept. Uh, it's to try to analyze the different aspects of software applications, software production, and software development and developers. So our purpose uh, are we try to identify the code defects. For instance, for a large amount, a very large code base, we hope to identify where the but, uh, where bugs are and are located, and if there are memory leaks as well, and also there are if there are security vulnerabilities. So these are really very uh, costly for industry sometimes if they do it uh, manually. And the second topic about the software engineering research is we try to build software development techniques such as IDE supports. For instance, uh, code completion or API recommendation. So we provide uh, more and more tools or techniques for developers to write code more efficiently. And we also, in the broad context of software engineering, we also have empirical funding studies, such as so-called empirical software engineering. Uh, it's a study on the evolution patterns or human aspects of uh, software and software production, because uh, a major component of software production is human. So human, human issues in software engineering research are very, very important. In today's talk, I'm going to give, uh, give the introduction about our work. It's about a static program analysis. So many of you, although so many of you have the knowledge about static analysis, but I still want to give you the introduction. We study the behaviors of computer programs, and by scanning source co code only, we can discover the code defects during the development phase so that people can fix it automatically or manually. So, so static analysis is normally required to be scalable to very large amount of source, source code. And uh, our project is uh, purely 100% static approach. And the reason we use static approach is simply because uh, for many scenarios, we cannot actually execute the program or we cannot actually generate all the possible inputs for your program. Let's say you have a source code uh, uh, project, maybe it's uh, a million lines of code, and how can you use human labor to identify the bugs and how can we actually execute this program? A program can take maybe a week or two weeks to finish execution, and if you wanted to test, to test a software system, in trying to fit in all the possible inputs that's unrealistic. So this is the static pro program analysis. So here's an, here's an example code that we have a case variable, and it takes the value from input. If the case is one, then we initialize a variable named A, and if the case is two, then we initialize a variable B. So finally, we add one, we add one to the variable A and assign it to C. If you remember the conditional statement here, and if the case is two, do we have problems here? Right? So it's uh, apparently it's because A is not de defined. So it's, this is a name error. A name error is the example I'm going to use for this talk. Now, here's the central topic of today's uh, uh, presentation. If we look at the past 20 years, and let's see, let's look at how the pattern language is being used by the we simply look at uh, the programming community index for the 
20 years, the Python in, after the 2020 has uh, overtaken Java and C as the major and the, the most popular program languages. Uh, most popular, popular program language today, right after 2016, as you can see from the diagram, that clearly it grows fa very fast. So, so the, the question now is, uh, be the most popular programming language, how do we analyze the Python programs and how do we build better tools because it grows so fast. There is a lag between the analysis work and the software development. So we, let's look at the first the industry solutions. We talk about analysis, so uh, we can summarize that uh, all the major tech chains offer the static analysis tools, for instance, the PyTab, and Pyrite, P-Y-R-E, by Microsoft, Google, and uh, Facebook, or Meta. So these solutions are basically about, uh, about a specific problem. Let's, let's say the three of the three tools I've listed here are about the tap checking and tap inference. So this is not applicable for a broader challenges, such as dependence analysis, analysis. I guess many Python developers are really frustrated if they see some dependency issues, you get everything done, but when you download the software and you try to execute it and it gives you a module not found error, right? So, so this is uh, uh, the problem with the industry solutions, that their approach are basically about a, problem, uh, a specific problem. So we want to also look at what researchers are saying. For the past uh, three years, if we look at uh, the major and prestigious software engineering conference, uh, conferences, uh, people actually make uh, quite a few complaints about Python's uh, static analysis. In uh, the ICSI 2019, it's, um, uh, normally it's considered uh, mo the most influential software engineering conference. The, the researchers complain there are limits to the type inference so that they cannot infer the dependencies for code snippets. Um, this is actually very useful because uh, in many cases we uh, get the software from the open source project, we, uh, we actually want to reuse it. If we cannot uh, get the dependencies for the code we have already obtained from open source project, that will be, that will be uh, meaningless for us. So uh, right after that, uh, there is a research from myself. Um, it's also, uh, we, in our study, we show that there is really a need for helping Python developers to avoid the usage of deprecated APIs because if you use deprecated APIs, maybe one year or two year or even half a, half a year after that, the APIs are removed from the latest packages. So um, this really caused a lot of trouble for your maintenance work. And right after that, uh, we see a very interesting and very promising work about core graph generation. This is about to understand how function calls are represented in the Python source code. But the author also complained that in their work that we, they have to ignore the conditional and loops, but this is very commonly uh, used for Python syntax features. So lastly, this year we see a very, very uh, strong comments that Python cannot uh, take advantage of analysis and algorithms that have been developed throughout uh, decades of research. So this is, uh, I personally think this is uh, a strong comment. And now, if we compare the Python and other two major programming languages, Java and C, and these two languages are the major, uh, are normally used for software productivity, especially for very big tech chains like Oracle and Google, so they are really highly relied on these two languages. But if we compare their, their word analysis algorithms for Java and C, we see uh, we can clearly see that the three address code IR, immediate representation, it's a data structure extracted from source code so that we can build upon uh, for better, uh, for other tasks. So it's not available for Python language. And even we see the core graph, as I mentioned, the core graph is a very important concept in, the, uh, in software analysis. It's the core graph construction is an open problem until 2021. And lastly, I would say that so far we haven't seen a static framework such as Java Suite. And this is a very, very famous project. So two chains are so mature and sophisticated in Java and C languages, but why is this so hard for Python? Now we have to uh, look at uh, why it is so, because uh, the languages are so different. First of all, it has the nested the scopes. Nested the scope means you can define a function inside a function inside a function and in this way. So when I scan open source project, I even find a project that actually have the nested depth of seven times. So that means they have function inside a function inside a function for seven times. 
I really wonder how can a development manager, how can he memorize the structure? So the second one is higher order functions. This is all, not a feature for other two major languages. Higher order function means you can, you can use a function as a variable. For instance, you can define a function and you can pass it to uh, another name so that you can use that function. This is very practical and very convenient for scientific computing because I myself, I worked on scientific computing. Very, very convenient. But, but uh, what makes it so convenient for faster prototyping makes it so difficult for analysis. Let's look at this code snippet. You have to define uh, two error functions to compute the error of different shapes. But when actually a function happen, happens, how can we know that which function is actually invoked, right? So the, last, the second uh, feature is dynamic type of variables. The variable has no type, or in particular, strictly speaking, that a variable has no type. Only the value can be typed in pattern language, and ver names, uh, variables are actually names. So dynamic type means you, the developer have to uh, have to write many different cases so that uh, we can we can uh, verify if the in, if the input are uh, belongs to a certain type and pattern so called a duck typing right so variable types can be can change so this feature is also not part of C and Java which are strongly which are uh, static type languages and lastly involving syntax yesterday right here I listened to a very interesting question for the Python core developers is the involving syntax. For well, Python is in the right direction of Python ecosystem. So the question is very, I think it's very good for the Python core developers. And the, the core team says, uh, we believe so, we believe it is in the right direction. But I wouldn't agree in terms of static analysis because uh, fragmentation issues are really a nightmare for, for us. So involving syntax, you see the Python has releases, releases every year. So it's just like a smartphone apps rather than a program languages, right? So. What makes convention analysis uh, in applicable is Python is so un unique and different from other two languages. So here's a good snippet that given a function get for every function, we have defined twice for different shapes. When the function call actually happens, how can you identify which function is invoked? So if you are interested, you can think about this one. But what makes it so hard to analyze also uh, is the situation when I started my PhD study in the 2020. At that time, I was just a first year. I realized that when I develop approaches for solving some challenges, uh, like dependency analysis, I had to build everything from scratch. So why not I make it an open source project? That, that was my idea. So the idea was to offer as many possible functionalities as possible for uh, developers. So we have uh, the core level that we hope to offer the very critical algorithms for static analysis. After that, we can build upon some modules like API name qualification so that these approaches are very practical to solve some particular problem like API studies. We want to know that what APIs the Python program has accessed. So with this one, and you can solve the dependency issues like if you actually has if you have the knowledge about what APIs of Python program have accessed, then it, it is easier for you to know that which, depend, which dependent libraries you are going to, uh, to detect. So this is the overview of our framework. Um, the objective, as I said, is uh, we hope to offer a set of functionalities such as control flow graphs and defined use relations, scope analysis, code rewriting to facilitate the program analysis for Python as for the next. I will explain the uh, name error as an example, and I will describe how we can use why the four, the four modules I'm listing today are, are important. So now if, if we take the previous example uh, again, that we have a function named the toy, and if case is one, then A is zero. If case is two, B is zero. C is equal to A plus one after the if statement and return A. So now we know the problem occurs in the uh, assignment for the variable C, right? So. A common story is so you develop a, you develop a, an application, and so you feel like there are two uh, two packages are really useful for your project. I think the Python developers always love this uh, uh, this project, uh, this uh, dependent uh, libraries. And now we feel like they actually dependent on the same library, but just different version constraints, unfortunately. But even so, you you have resolved the dependency. But this is the story. Like finally, you give you see the name error problem. So the name error itself is uh, not so toy. 
Why? Because uh, we observe this uh, frequently occurred in the very popular Python, Python libraries such as TQDM, as I showed here. Uh, TQDM is very popular among the deep learning developers. It's, uh, it's going to show a progress bar for your, uh, for you, for your program. And, but the library itself is, has more than 100 contributors and used by more than 270,000 projects. And that means this bug actually propagates from the open source project to your client program. So we can summarize the program scatter among Python OS uh, projects. But even so, uh, I guess some of you may be, if you work on data science, you often use the computational notebooks, Jupyter Lab, right? I heard that some people are using that. Uh, are there people using Jupyter Notebook? OK, thank you. So uh, we read three years ago that there is a study pointing out that among one million computational notebooks, name error is actually a major problem. And this, this study also confirmed by another uh, research by computer science research, uh, computer science education research, name error is also a primary problem for Python beginners, especially for students. I guess uh, uh, although it's so simple that variable is not defined. This is actually not a problem in C and Java because compiler will do that, but Python code just uh, execute. And even if it happens, you don't know where uh, the problem triggers. Now, if, if, we, if we see that uh, uh, it, uh, if we see the code snippet in a graphic way, we build a control flow graph. The control flow gr graph, the graph actually represents all the possible execution, uh, uh, execution paths for the given program we are able to know that there is a certain path that if you, if the program control flow goes along the path, the problem will occur. So right here, it goes to from if, and then it's if, uh, if case is two, and then if case is not two, and then we see the name error occurs. So building the graph will be very essential for detecting such, diff, such problem. But only by this, by doing control flow graph is not is sufficient because in real world scenario, a control flow graph will have more than 1,000 nodes, even, even, even much, uh, much more. So this is not a, a possible way for us. So we have to do different use relations offered by Scapa as well. So it try to answer the question, where does a variable depend? So we have a, lot, a set of techniques such as uh, a static single assignment or constant propagation, which I'm not going to discuss uh, too much today. But uh, we can say that the, the relationship between all the variables and their definitions will be very critical for detecting software bugs, especially for name error, because apparently if you cannot find the definition for a certain variable, that's name error, right? So the next one is uh, sometimes we don't often just want to know where the problem is. We want to know that where the uh, where is the code of line that actually triggers the problem? Because uh, I've already shown you that the problem occurs in the if statement. Uh, but in, in the, a very large scale projects, we also want to know that where is the function code, right? So uh, the, the reason it, we want to know that is this can be very essential for the IDE support. Now, to, to understand this uh, information, we have to go to scope analysis. The Python language has so-called LEGB rule local, enclosing, global, built-in. As I said, Python language has a very special scope design, the agnostic structure. So we borrow the concept from latest research from the program language theory community. So we build the, something called a scope graph. And based, based on scope graph, it works like this. First, we look at the toy, and we find it's a local scope. So we identify there is no, the, the name itself is not produced or is not declared in this scope. Now we go to the enclosing one and it's not declared there. So we go to global one. So finally we find it. But things are not always, wor uh, not always working in uh, the one that I'm, uh, I'm speaking. So we, in the internal representation of Scapa framework, we have the so-called uh, scope graph. So in a scope graph, we represent lexical scopes in a graphic way that you can see the different relations here. Uh, let's say the case is uh, declared in the scope of function, and Tor is referenced in the scope of function. And the scope of a class has the parent relation of uh, scope of function. Uh, modular function is the root, fun root scope here. So finally, we can map the location of a uh, toy, the name itself, to its definition. And lastly, we don't 
we, we not only want to detect where the problems are, we want to program repair, right? We don't want always fix bugs by ourselves. So automation will always be the best way. So Scuffer framework also offer a set of APIs so you f so for you so that you can rewrite your programs, not just for automatic program repair, but also for program transformation. That will be another pro uh, another interesting applications. So the transformation in the Scuffer framework will be directly made to the abstract syntax trees. So the purpose is to fix some errors automatically. So lastly, I would like to show you that uh, uh, we, a summary of our pro, uh, product. Our product has uh, more than 11,000 lines of code already, and this is uh, some statistical results. I'm very surprised after, after making it uh, after making it publicly available for the community half a year, just half a year, we have received more than 100 stars. Maybe for data scientists or maybe for um, very popular topics, this will be very easy to achieve. But for static analysis, we don't often see there are so many people who are interested in such projects. So I'm really actually surprised. So I really appreciated the recognition, recognition from the community. And lastly, it's, it's also where I came here from the Australian. We hope to listen to your opinions on our project. So do you have ideas for the, such a static analysis work? If you are from technical background, do you have a, uh, analysis algorithm that you feel like that will be better for our project. I'll be really glad to talk with you. Or you hope to work on, the, or you hope to contribute to this project even about a code review because we are from Academy. We are not really good at managing open source project. So any voice or any feedback from you would be really uh, appreciated by our team. So lastly, I would uh, like to uh, thank all of you. Thank you for your time. I really in hope you enjoy the talk. I'd like to take your questions. Next. Okay, guys, let's give a warm round of applause for Joey. Thank you very much for that presentation. Thank you. I think it's really interesting to see that tension between uh, the work we're seeing in the CPython uh, runtime with all of its new features and expansions uh, together with the desire to build static analysis and improve yes. code in that way. I see we have uh, one question member from the audience. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Uh, so my first question is about the, you, you said there are like four Python static analysis tools. So which tools did you count? Uh, okay, uh, problem is to this part. It's actually uh, from Wikipedia because it is really difficult to give, uh, to give the total number from no matter from where. So I simply use uh, uh, the data from Wikipedia. I think that's a standard. Yeah, because I know there's like Bandit, uh, yes, which there. is open source. There is CodeQL, which is from GitHub and closed source, like Sonar or Checkmarks, uh, which are apparently proprietary as well. I, yeah, uh, but in that case, if we count all the uh, number of products from the community, we have to count uh, for other two major languages as well. So as uh, to be fair, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, do you actually have some rules implemented there that could be used like in a CI CD pipeline or maybe for some security testing or things like that? At the moment, um, we don't have for security, uh, for, for security rules at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, regarding scope analysis, do you also support uh, those keywords like global variable or non-local variable? Do you consider this? Yes, the statement we will yeah. consider. Okay. So yeah, that's all questions I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any that are are there any other questions at this point? If so, please approach the microphone here. Hello. Thank you for your for your presentation. So I would like to ask you also if you did some uh, performance evaluation of your algorithm for the call graph construction or the mean evaluation uh, performance so if you the the time performance uh, the uh, the performance yes in terms of uh, in terms of execution efficiency it's like for control uh, for the name error detection itself because name error is right now detection is a part of my research we have to release that data to the free open source project for some academic purpose uh, at the moment i mean but we are going to but i can see that for Average open source projects, we scan it uh, like 0 0.17, uh, 0 0.70 seconds per source file. So I think it's a reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, but I think this is a really important question because static analysis must be scalable. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions at this point for Jeway? If not, then we'll round off uh, this session with another round of applause and a thank you for Jeway.